Initiating All right, hello and welcome everybody back to the NACE Overwatch Spring Cup. This is the final matchup of Stage 1. We're going to have Kettering University up against St. Clair College. My name is Daniel Banner, also known as Mr. Danner, is going to be here hosting the matchup here for you guys tonight. On the side of Kettering University, we do have Light Nail, Creator Core, Jagos, or J Jagles, Hydra Seeds, Black Light, and Drock. Meanwhile, the hometown crowd here, St. Clair College, we have Crypts, we have Justin, Imp, Prince Wada, Seymour, and Jub Jub. Getting things started on Elias, it looks like, for game number one. I see this St. Clair squad getting all prepped up, ready to go. Curious as to what they're going to be bringing out. Looks like a relatively safe standard pick coming out here from St. Clair in regards to everybody's roles, everyone's heroes. You know, on the side of Kettering, looking at something maybe a little bit more bunkery, maybe a little bit more, excuse me, bringing the double shields back. And then Jub Jub, of course, the DPS playmaker. We're going to be looking to try and get a flank with the Reaper, and we're going to get ourselves a very quick pause. Something seems to have uh, gone wrong for one of the players. So in the meantime, while we wait for these players to get back up and running, do you want to take a look at what it, the tail of the tape here is for our matchup here tonight? So St. Clair College, or St. Clair Saints, and Kettering University are both currently 3-1. and one in this nice Overwatch Spring Cup. More than likely, both are going to be safe in terms of uh, moving forward. I'm gonna just confirm that actually right now. Yeah, right now St. Clair currently being shown in first place in the division, but of course there's three teams actually that are being shown as 3-1. So you have St. Clair, you have the BSC Bobcats, who have a matchup happening later on tonight as well, and then it's going to be Kettering University. So if it is two teams moving forward, this very well could actually be the difference maker between moving forward to playoffs or your season being done right here. The only team that Kettering has lost to so far in this series was the BC, BSC Bobcats. And St. Clair also lost to the same team in 2-1 fashion. So B, BSC going to be scary as well, considering they have to play the last place team currently in their group. So they're probably going to get a win here tonight if, uh, if seeding says anything about it. But now we're back into the action. So... This first point is so far, this first fight's looking pretty decent here for St. Clair. Jump Jump kind of getting stuck on Crip's wall. Apparently Imp was having a little bit of trouble there with his connection, but got it all back up and running. And St. Clair are going to be able to take care of this first point. Going to start capturing some percent. You have pretty early on the board, 11% on the board. And in terms of ultimates, we do have two ready to go on the side of St. Clair. The only one available right now for... Uh, Kettering is on a, a Black Lights Nano Boost. Could probably see that on Ryan if he wants to charge in here, but you do have to watch out for this uh, the Shatter that Prince Water could whip out at any point. Jub Jub with a flank could wait for them to get in. There we go, he's got it right on the back line, and he almost has his ults ready if he really gets it, but a nice sleep dart coming out here from Blacklight. Going to shut down. Drock on try and pop him, but in the meantime, they turn the focus a little bit on to Jub Jub. Meanwhile, St. Clair just tear everybody apart in the meantime. Nice hold. The Shatter did come out from Prince Wada as well as the Coalescence from Yustin, but we have two more ultimates now on deck. Make it a third as Crypt, Imp, and Jub Jub all have alts ready to go. Although, Drock does have his on the side of Kettering. And this could be scary. This is actually Jump Jump getting really sneaky. He's going to pop the ultimate nice and quick. Gets a triple before this fight even starts. Single-handedly getting himself a triple. And then Yustin coming in clutch with one of the orbs to finish off the big tank of Lightning. They did not expect to see that one coming. I am sure of that. Completely shaking Gettering to their core. 
83, 85 percent now on the board here for St. Clair College to take the first part of this map. And Jub Jub with another cheeky angle. He's waiting for a hero to show themselves. Does get a little bit impatient though. He's gonna just start peppering on all the DPS and the tanks as well. Maybe a little bit overzealous. But we do see the flux coming out here. This is on the side of uh, Kettering with Creator Core. Back and forth battle as the Molten Core is also down on the point and around the point. And Jub Jub's one of the only ones left here. Yeah, he's gonna have to fall off because I think Justin was the only one left with him who and he did escape. So the point is gonna get flipped over here to Kettering once again, or for the first time in this matchup rather. Going to start building up some percent. But one more team fight for St. Clair and this will be the round going to them. Seymour's got that diva bomb. He's gonna send it right into the window. Special delivery, going to take out the turret and take out Creator Core. And then with the Blizzard from Crypt as well, this should be a nice clean fight here for St. Clair. Just a matter of getting rid of this Lucio and getting rid of maybe one more member of Kettering. There goes Blacklight. And so far, so good. Nobody going down on the side of St. Clair College. Overtime bar gonna tick down, but there is gonna be nobody to contest this. The first point of Ilias going over to St. Clair College. And so both these teams in in a position where they of course they obviously want to win but the pressure is on because um if either team loses is probably getting knocked out of out of the season today it's disappointing with three teams going three and one of course it does depend also on the bf the bsc match happening later on tonight versus virginia but like I was saying before, at least in terms of seeding and the results right now, BSC is looking favored. Whoever, or actually now that I think about it, if you do get into a tiebreaker situation, say BSC does go down, it would then be a head-to-head -head tiebreaker and then BSC has won both against both of these teams. So they would move forward. So there's actually quite a bit on the line here. Your playoff hopes are on the line, of course. Switching it over to the second point as we see we're trying to get to the low ground to capture, but at the same time, if you have that high ground, you get to pepper everybody from above. St. Clair going to take care of the very first point. Drock making a switch over to Reaper in this case, giving himself a kill as Jub Jub was playing Doomfist. See more peppering from above, but as of right now, the rest of St. Clair are going to move forward ever so slightly and have a good defensive hold on the point so they could start building some percent. Prince Wada with the Shatter ready to go. Whether it be engage or counter engage, we'll get to see. We're gonna have dueling coalescences coming out here from Yustin and Blacklight. It's gonna be Yustin finding himself the kill though, so far. And it may be the retreat coming out here from Kettering. And Prince Wada gonna find himself one more with that flame strike. Nicely done, gonna push them back once again as we're at 45% in this round for St. Clair. It did, of course, have to blow the two ultimates. Crypt does have Haze, and we're going to have two, maybe three more on deck very shortly. And we're going to have a couple ults on deck from Kettering as well, I'm sure we'll see very shortly. And yeah, Jiggles just got his. Jub Jub looking for an opportunity to strike on a squishy, but not going to quite find the mark he was looking for. Preemptive. Sound barrier coming out from Hydro, but this is going to make everybody from Kettering just start blowing everything. And so far, it's been two kills going in their favor. This Jagos does find a kill on Tawada, and Blacklight finds one as well. And Creator Core is also going to use his ultimates. There's three ultimates burned on this fight. They do have two more available if they want to try to push it, but they are diff wisely, wisely not going to use it. They're able to clean up this fight. Just a matter of dealing with Imp, who is finally dealt with, and. Kettering University going to flip this point. Although now looking at alt economy, it is looking pretty rough as St. Clair is about to have run onto five ultimates. And then you have Jub Jub, who is playing Tracer now. 
and that all teach of, uh, of tracers really charges quickly. So if you can find his opportunity just to start poking people, it could be deadly. And this might actually be pretty scary if Jump Jump could get onto the Coalescence uh, Blacklight here. Maybe splits. Oh no, that was actually a really nice shatter coming out here from Prince Wada. Many members of Kettering University down, but not out just yet. Going to trade one back. Creator Core getting a kill, but at the same time, Seymour getting on the board, taking out Drock. Imp is being an absolute nuisance on that high ground, making sure nobody can try and pepper from there. And in that little corridor, you're stuck next to a hammer swinging Reinhardt. You're absolutely toast. And St. Clair going to be able to take that and flip this back over 99% and no contest. It is going to be St. Clair taking game number one here in this best of three. Play of the game. And Jump Jump going to get himself the play of the game here. I'm guessing this is that sneak attack, and we're not going to get to see it. But it was probably one of the highlight moments where uh, he had he was actually very, very far up ahead, had his ult ready, and completely by himself just pops the ult and goes for it. So St. Clair up 1-0 in this very, very last match for uh, the Stage 1 of the Nace Overwatch Cup. Gonna take a quick break as we get into game number two. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. All right, getting back into it. Game number two about to begin between Kettering University and St. Clair College. St. Clair taking game one in a pretty convincing fashion on Ilias. Just two maps and that's all they needed. Took care of it. Not, a, not allowing, I think even 50% to get on the board for Kettering in both of the rounds. So pretty dominant start. And if Kettering wants to have any sort of hopes getting into these playoffs, they need to make something happen right now here on Dorado, which of course is going to be the escort style map, push the card all the way to the end through the checkpoints and just basically get it as far as you possibly can. Ready for battle. Starting off, let's see St. Clair. No, no teams making any player swaps. They do have more than six players on their roster. So it is something that could have definitely come into play. However, both teams opting to not do so. It's going to be Kettering University on defense to start this round. We got Druck back on the Torbjorn. We've got Blacklight sticking to the Moira. Hydro is bringing out the Baptiste. So this is a little bit different for him. Jaggle's been pretty much stuck on that May for most of the day. FMR now on the Reinhardt and Lightneal bringing out the D.Va for the defense on this side. Meanwhile, we got the double shield styled bunker comp with two long range um, DPS servers as we do have Crypt on the Ash and Jub Jub on Hanzo. So of course Hanzo rather like sniper in nature, Crypt on the Ash, very similar, but has a little bit of extra utility to not be strictly a sniper. And Jump Jump just on this angle, they really put uh, Kettering University in an uncomfortable position to the point where they're gonna fall down and just play the, the arches for the time being. Anytime Crypt finds it, that turret, it just instantly goes down. Jump Jump getting jumped on, but living at eight HP, he's gonna be able to just pepper away from the back line even further and just take down that shield. But the first casualty is gonna go over to Kettering as Jaggles takes down one. And then here comes the rest of Kettering to just charge on through. Hydra Seeds and the rest of the squad from Kettering pushing St. Clair back to their spawn. Of course, these this archway here is an absolute pain for the attacker to get through. But as soon as they do, it kind of opens up a little bit. Got many more avenues of attack more places for Jub Jub and Crypts to go play in terms of DPS. We do have FMR with the Shatter available. And we do see the ults coming down here from Hydra Seeds, that amplification matrix. Healing and damage coming through that thing is going to be, of course, multiplied. Forces St. Clair to kind of slow down a little bit. Wait for it. Here comes a Dragon Strike, though, from the corner. It's going to go right through, and Blacklight's going to try and keep everybody alive with the Coalescence. That was a... I was going to say I thought I was on Yana, but I could be completely wrong here. It comes the Diva Bomb coming out from Lightning. Not going to find anybody at this moment. 
And there's the Shatter coming up from FMR. Nicely done. Takes down Justin for the time being. And right now, the rest of the St. Clair squad in a world of hurt. And once again, just barely. Actually, they haven't even pushed this card any forward. Kettering doing a very solid job of holding it down. Even chasing down the kill. Seymour stuck in, uh, in Baby Diva mode. Getting taken out by Blacklight's orbs. That's going to slow things down big time. However, St. Clair are about to show up with like four alts. Yeah, there it is. And depending on how fast Jub Jub gets moving, it could be crazy. The wall from Crypt's trying to keep the, everyone stuck. There comes the Blizzard as well. Let's see how St. Clair layers these ultimates. They only use the Blizzard and the Coalescence apps at this moment. Jago's going to counteract with his own Blizzard. Going to be able to find the healing crew of St. Clair. Two more on the board. A little bit of a back and forth. Here comes the bomb once again. Not going to find the of the targets, but the DPS is down too. Hydro Seeds finishing off Jub Jub. We only have a minute left on the clock here for St. Clair, and they have to bring this to that first checkpoint. Four ultimates still on the board for St. Clair. They need to use everything pretty much to get through this. If anybody, anybody gets picked off, this would be absolutely devastating. Seymour probably going to sit back and ready to fire off this bomb. There it goes. It's going to go behind the well. Can it find any takedowns? It just, just get rid of the invulnerability field from... Uh, from Hydra Seeds, but that's about it. Drock gonna slow things down. Molten Core in the pathway, but does get taken out. Three members of Kettering all going down, but some members from St. Clair are also getting dropped. Drock getting one, Jagel's getting one. But overall, St. Clair with the player advantage, gonna be able to clean up and finally bring this to the first checkpoint, give themselves some extra time. With <laughs> right in the nick of time, as there's like 10 seconds left on the clock for them. Had they lost that, that would have been game over for this round and we would have had Kettering on the attack already. But now one point on the board for St. Clair, two minutes and 30 seconds now to try and bring this to the second checkpoint. Now Crypt, it felt like he just had his blizzard, but he's gonna have another one up in just a moment. Of course, when it gets a little bit tight knit, it could be a little bit scary. And actually, a good wall going to split up the squad. Crypt has all the time in the world, but the ice block coming out just in time here for Jaggles. Going to keep him alive ever so slightly. And St. Clair really pushing their advantage here, just chasing everybody down. Two members down on the side of Kettering. Trading ice blocks and going to get whacked. There goes Imp's going to find one, and Crypt is going to find the other. This one much better now that you don't have to deal with that gigantic, uh, or that tiny, rather, that tiny archway. Now that you don't have to deal with that, it's just smooth sailing here for St. Clair. Nice little usage from Crypts of the Ice Wall to get himself boosted up there. Making it, of course, very difficult for Kettering to do any sort of pressures. They're going to give it a shot, though. It's going to be FMR leading the charge right before it gets to the, the checkpoint. Not even a meter away, it's so close. Lightning gonna try and bring the Diva Bomb and make it happen, but not going to work. St. Clair getting two, including the Pulse Bomb kill from Jub Jub. Seymour getting a kill onto FMR, the big tank is down. Blacklight trying to keep everybody grouped up, but they're all spread out. Moira's healing is definitely not very well in terms of split up engagements. You want them to be in the death hall. You want them to be kind of close together. And St. Clair gonna plow through this. They're gonna get this second checkpoint nicely. And now, actually, a bit of an overextension. I don't know if the spawn was not ready for FMR or what. But he was spawned pretty closely, and he's going to get taken down again, essentially staggering themselves. St. Clair moving up all the way to the third checkpoint. And Jump Jump just being an absolute nuisance. He's basically in the spawn point of Kettering and took down one of the members again. So continuing to stagger these guys even further. Yeah, forcing the fact that there would not be any sort of 6v6 action that St. Clair would have the advantage in all these battles. Coalescence coming out here from Blacklight, though. Going to try and begin to engage. Going to be answered by Yustin right away. And this is much better here for Blacklight. Everybody all clumped up. But if it's all clumped up, you have to deal with the Blizzard. Nicely done there from Crypt. It's going to set them up for one, two kills as of this moment. And that's going to... 
<laughs> we got another minute on the clock. We are at the doorstep of the very final checkpoint. Is any good buddy going to be able to contest? Drock is going to try. He's got the Molten Core. He's going to try it, but see more answers with the Diva Bomb. And that's it's now a walled off area. Jaggles does find Jub Jub at least, but Imp is going to finish off the big tank of FMR. Diva Bomb in a bit of an odd spot. That is the Blizzard coming out from Jaggles as well. Imp just in time here with the Sound Barrier, keeping his squad alive as St. Clair continues to try and push this final point. But it feels like almost endless reinforcements. The wall coming out once again, going to force uh, the Kettering squad to take the long way around. FMR now point blank here. The tanks are here. Huge shatter coming out here from FMR. But at least Seymour is going to be able to answer with one kill. And surprisingly, even though four members got dropped in that shatter, nobody was there to really follow up. FMR forced to run back, but he's going to get taken down. Prince Wada taking care of that. Jub Jub has the pulse bomb available. Find a squishy. Doesn't quite make contact, but it's going to at least annoy the heck out of Blacklight for the time being. To the point where they won't be able to even get back here. Still being contested over time now. Now St. Clair has to make sure that they do not fall off the cart itself. Otherwise, they could accidentally throw the match away. But that is going to be it. Jub Jub gets a double. And one more kill going in the way of St. Clair College. And they're going to be able to push this all the way to a three-point game. A good comeback here for St. Clair, considering they were down to their final seconds in that first point. Now, if Kettering wants to have any sort of hope here for their playoffs, they need to go all the way another three-point round, try to do it faster than what St. Clair did, and then win it in overtime. Any less will be likely the end of their season. Ready for battle. Now, with St. Clair on the defense, how do they want to change this up if they change it up at all? It seems like they have a relatively one-size-fits-all kind of game plan here for Dorado, at least, as everybody's back on the same characters as they, or the same heroes, rather, they were on before this game got started and during the attacking phase. The only one really switching around would have been Jub Jub. He kind of switched up between the Tracer and the Hanzo and Reaper, and then Crypt, I guess, was also on Ash for the opening phase of that which did allow St. Clair to knock the Kettering University squad off the high ground. But as soon as they were gone, they basically switched right back up to the May. And it's been doing pretty well. Opting to not do a high ground defense, St. Clair is going to bring this right to their doorstep. And a good start. Drock is going to get taken down. Junkrat going out early here, getting caught by the flame strike. Well, I don't think Kettering University were expecting this one, and to be honest, neither was I. Normally, you see them go up into the high ground and hold from there. You do not usually see somebody at their doorstep. A huge wall as the, as the nano boost goes on to FMR. But because he was the only one who made it out of that wall alive, St. Clair was just able to focus him down nice and quick, take him out, and the threat has been negated. And then Imp going to find another one, taking down Jaggles. Kettering unable to leave their spawn. And then this is really irritating if you're Light Mail, just completely taken down out of your mech and you're in the spawn room, so you can't even like um, like eliminate yourself to uh, get your mech back unless you go back to uh, switch your hero, but then do you want to give up your uh, ult charge? Absolutely not. Oh, that was a good sleep dart though, coming out from Blacklight, switching over to the Ana and doing a fantastic job so far. Shutting down Jub Jub. But in the meantime, as I say that, Jub Jub gets revenge. The Shatter come down from FMR as he dies. And it's going to be three kills so far going over in the favor of Kettering. They're finally able to break out of here. Two minutes and 20 seconds on the clock. Could have been much worse, to be honest. They're going to go chase this down now and try to uh, regroup and push this card. But they were stuck there for probably a good minute and a half. But this may allow them to get this thing pushed past the archway before St. Clair's reinforcements are all there. There's a couple of them here, but not everybody is in position ready to go. Crypt is going to uh, put that wall up, though, so... Could be deadly. Never mind, that's even deadlier. Drock with the Riptire going to take down Crypt. He was not ready for it. Did not see it coming. 
And then Hydro Seeds took down Prince Wada. So we should be able to see Kettering get out of this hard portion of Dorado, this the archway, pretty well unscathed, and should allow them to get that first point much faster compared to what St. Clair did. Hey, Blizzard coming out. This time it's from Crypt, I do believe. They're going to try and make the hold here, but it actually got eaten by Lightning. Nicely done there from the D.Va player on Kettering, shutting that ultimate down, completely null and void. And it looks like Kettering are going to just slaughter their way through this one, getting that first checkpoint. And now they have three minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock to push forward towards the second one. By the time this fight happens, we'll probably have four ultimates on deck for this side of Kettering, able to try and push our advantage even further. The only thing there to kind of counter things out would be the Coalescence from Yustin. But that's a lot to ask for. That one ult, it is good, don't get me wrong, but to try and stop the amount of utility that Kettering has ready to fire out, it's going to be rough. Here comes a Diva Bomb coming out from Lightning. It's not going to make contact with anybody. Yustin going to get caught out of position, though. Jaggles and Blacklight going to finish him off. Jub Jub getting taken down by the Diva. Lightning again on an absolute tear. We got the Blizzard coming out, but it is going to be gobbled up. Seymour taking care of it that time. Can that swing the fight, though? Not exactly. Ketterings, even without the Blizzard, going to be still able to take care of this fight. And they're going to be pushing this cart even for more forward as we have Dragon Strike available for Jub Jub if he wants to take it. Seymour has a Diva Bomb as well. Crypt is going to have himself a Blizzard as well. They could, oh, nice shot there from Drock as soon as Jub Jub peeks his head out, taken down, and that's one huge critical ultimate that could have been used to try and stall on the second point. And Sinclair might have to actually give this up right now. Completely, for the most part, uncontested. And they even used the Dragon Strike on it. Sure, Lightning goes down, but the damage is already done. They already got the second point. They're going to be able to push things forward here as they now have 3 minutes and 20 seconds to try and get this final checkpoint. St. Clair looking like they're having a very hard time here on defense on Dorado. Blizzard now available. As soon as they turn the corner, it's going to be a pretty tight-knit spot for him to fire that out. But we'll have to see. Jub Jub kind of getting a bit of revenge here. Does get the kill onto Jaggles before the fight really gets started. Crypt's debating on it. Is going to fire it out. And this time, the D.Va was already in a world of hurt. Was not going to be able to gobble up that ultimate. And St. Clair are going to be able to hold this time by. Yustin going to chase down, try and secure some more kills. But there are some reinforcements coming out from Kettering just past the point. So going to retreat for the time being. Drock does have Bob available if he wants to use it. We could have ourselves five ultimates on the side of Kettering for this next push. Will absolutely be devastating and it's going to start things off with the diva bomb. Will it find anybody? It does. It catches Crypt off guard real quick and takes the the mech from Seymour. A Shatter coming out is going to knock a bunch of players over as well. And Kettering going to be able to just sweep through. And they're putting themselves in fantastic position to not only bring this to overtime, but have much more time on the clock for their overtime run. Bob is now in play as well. Drock just put him down. And no contest. St. Clair absolutely botching this defense compared to what Kettering was doing. Fantastic job. Now we get to see overtime rounds. So St. Clair going to have, of course, one minute to attack and see how much further they can push the cart. Meanwhile, Kettering have almost three minutes because they completed that, uh, that push in so much of a faster fashion. Ready for battle. I do believe we're going to have St. Clair start things off here on the attack. Of course, they only have the one minute. Just a matter of seeing how far can they push this. Their attack was pretty decent here on Dorado. 
for parts two and three anyway. The first portion, they had a very hard time getting through that archway. And if Kettering does the exact same thing, it could very well shut things down before he even really gets a chance to get started. And three minutes, essentially, for Kettering to push it through that archway Five, is a very four, much more or much more probable task compared to what St. Clair has to pull off here. So they got to... Let's see what they can do here as the high ground defense is going to come out from Kettering. Prince Wada leading the charge and they're going to be using this... Uh, using the truck as a little bit of cover alongside Prince Wada. Justin making the switch over to the Ana in this case, and jump jump on the Genji. I don't know how I feel about this. He better be making some plays, because anytime we see jump jump go Genji, he either pops off hard or gets completely dunked on. And especially since Blacklight is playing Ana, he's been absolutely on point with sleep darts in this game. If he tries to do something big, it could be devastating. In the meantime, they push through, and somehow they're able to get past this archway pretty well uncontested. Jaggles is going to find a kill though, but the Genji Jub Jub is going to find a kill onto Blacklight. He's taking a decent amount of damage here. He did get caught in the dynamite explosion. Couldn't be able to get the health pack though. Overtime is now in session here. St. Clair cannot leave the cards. They're kind of pushed far as of this moment, and kills are going back and forth. Crypt is out of here, but Drock is also gone. We do have Yustin giving the nano boost. I went over to Seymour actually, so Seymour's going to be able to just charge through, but he's going to get frozen. Getting kind of bounced out of here, though. A little bit of an odd position. Both tanks right now on the side of te the teams are down. Here comes the Dragon Blade. Does he dodge? Oh, what? Oh, everybody got dropped. And of course, Jub Jub was getting aggressive. Imp was not there just yet. You can see the bloodthirsty TPS nature really showing up as he went for the kills. But everybody else on St. Clair got dropped, which meant that cart was unattended. And that didn't even score St. Clair a point in overtime either. So this is going to be a hard one here for St. Clair. Two minutes and 49 seconds for Kettering to push this thing as far as they possibly can. I was actually pretty surprised who... Um, or for the most part, as Kettering, they left this area, this this archway, pretty well uncontested and just fought them up here by the fountain. And as you see right to there, that glowing rectangle, that's where Kettering have to push it. Not even all the way past the first, or for the first point. I am loving this. How does St. Clair defend this? If they try to do this extremely aggressive hold once again, if they somehow mess it up, they could probably get three quarters of the distance off of one respawn session. Kettering coming out swinging, but at the same time, it's looking like they're a little bit stuck for the meantime. All oh, that wall coming out from Crypt was absolutely clutch. That just shut down Jaggles' attempt with that Doomfist. You see Seymour making a switch off the D.Va and opting for the Zarya. First one we're seeing here. Actually, Light Nail bringing the same as well. Some classic Zarya Rhine play. Kettering getting antsy, though. They're coming out, and they're going to be able to finally break their spawn. Nobody from St. Clair going down. Never mind. Imps did go down. And now this is looking pretty sour for the side of St. Clair as three more members go down. Crypt, Perswada, and everybody else is getting taken down. A good sleep dart there from Yustin, but honestly, yeah, just go down. I would, If I was uh, Kettering, I actually would have probably staggered that. Have the 5v6 from St. Clair as they push this thing towards the end would have been absolutely devastating. Grabs will be available for both teams as we move forward to the fountain. Kettering University players all surrounding that triangle. They know they just got to push it a little bit further. And here comes the grabs. This is going to be both teams stuck. And because they were stuck, St. Clair is not going to be able to move forward to stop that truck from moving. We're going to a game three, Kettering University coming in clutch on Dorado.
We might actually get to see this play of the game, though, as we see Black Light, when all of St. Clair was stuck underneath, found his opportunity and just finishes the job. Nicely done. Who said the supports can't get a, a highlight moment here and there? Yeah, this means we're going to game number three. I'm sure it will not be very long before we get into that one. Curious as to which map these teams will pick, but we have any roster changes or what will we see here as both teams have their playoff lives on the line here at the Nays Overwatch Spring Cup. Stick around. This one will be starting very shortly. Initiating match. And we're back for game number three, and it would not be a St. Clair College Overwatch match if we did not bring it back to King's Row to possibly be the decider of playoff fates. Ready for battle. Okay, starting off on attack, we're going to have St. Clair moving forward, it looks like. I'm going to be bringing a relatively similar composition to what they were using at the end of that last round. The only real, or I guess the two things to really take note of, of course, Seymour not playing the D.Va on this one, is opting for Zarya once again. And Jub Jub is on the Doomfist, which is definitely a hero he has a ton of experience on. Granted, he got a bunch of that experience back when Doomfist was absolutely busted, but still, he knows his way around the hero and will be able to definitely show his effectiveness here, I'm sure. Prince Wada leading the charge, Amp Yustin, Going to be trying to keep everybody alive here as everybody just tucks into the building for the first part of this attack. Jump Jump going to go high, but he is going to be met up here by Light Nail, but he's going to be forced to drop back down. He doesn't want to try and tank six people all by himself, so he's going to just take a moment, bring around the Rosie here, around the point for the most part, forcing Kettering University to completely reroute their defense. This could allow Jub Chub to sneak in for the flank, and he's going to pop Blacklight instantly, but he's going to basically trade his life for it. And honestly, that may be a plus, considering the respawn distances here on King's Row. St. Clair are on the point. They have not made it past a tick. It is still being contested as the May. That's going to be Jaggles on the side of Kettering, able to hold for the time being, but a lot of Kettering members are falling. The tank line is down. Gotta deal with the bouncy Lucio, and there should be Jaggles there as well. Blacklight still pretty far away to try and help defend this. Going to be difficult. Hydro Seeds going down, and this first point should be going over to St. Clair. Not wasting any time taking this one. Objective 
Now that that control point has been taken over, it's time to push this cart. Very similar to what we had seen in Dorado. And the first casualty of the second portion is going to be Crypt as he goes down to Lightning. Switched over to the Zarya. And so that's going to be three picks coming out here on the side of Kettering. Jub Jub does find a kill onto Blacklight, but they should not be able to really push us forward. And Drock is going to shut down Jub Jub. And this should shut the push down for the time being. There are a lot of ultimates on deck here for this fight coming up. Six alts to five alts. This one could be explosive. And we're going to start off with Crypt firing out the blizzard. Meteor Strike coming down from Jub Jub. Going to be looking for Blacklight. I try and drop on him. Not going to find him just yet. Does manage to get some damage on, but not enough to take her out just yet. Good sleep dart coming out, but it doesn't matter with Blacklight being so distracted by Jub Jub. All the rest of the squad from Kettering do go down, blowing three ultimates and still losing the fight. St. Clair only blew two, and they are able to hang on to this one. Or they may have blew three as well, now that I think about it. Seymour did not have his at the start of that last fight, but now he has this. Lots of heat being put on to Prince Wada for the time being. And the Nano Boost coming out, that's going to be FMR, I believe, going crazy. Bob coming out from Drock can try and just obstruct the push from St. Clair. But they weren't really able to follow up on it until Drock just pops off of the double. And then we're going to see the Graviton come out. This is from Seymour. It's going to suck up all the members from Kettering. Going to be right back in a night nice shatter coming out from Prince Wada as he goes down. But it does not matter. FMR was still right in their face. They're going to be able to take care of that. Blacklight somehow wipes himself out, but... The fight is won for Kettering regardless, right before that second checkpoint. And we have another pause. Blacklight seems to have disconnected, unfortunately. So, thankfully for Kettering, as long as he comes back and everything's all good to go, Blacklight had just used his ultimate, so it's not like they lost charge. So, could have been, could have been worse, to say the least. But definitely a crazy way to excuse me it's a crazy way to finish off this first stage of course having the two teams that both need to win to guarantee themselves playoff hopes and we're going to a game three on what is notoriously a st Clair favorite in terms of the map And it looks like somebody else actually got di disconnected on the side of St. Clair. So it may be a quick moment before we hop back into this game. Yeah, just approaching this second checkpoint. Still just under three minutes on the clock here for St. Clair to get this. And I'm sure they want to be as comfortable as possible. Secure themselves three points. Because we've seen Kettering not afraid to be on the attack. Their attack on uh, Dorado was absolutely fantastic for the most part. Seemed much cleaner than St. Clair's in certain areas, that's for sure. So you don't want to leave anything up to chance, I'm sure. And then on the contrary, we had mentioned how since the Black Lake got disconnected, but he had already used his alt. I'm not 100% sure, but I want to say that Crypt had some charge to his alt. So he's going to be coming in here dry, I believe, unfortunately. So he's going to have to start from scratch again.
is still awaiting the return of Crypt to get into the game. Unfortunately, it sounds like a router rebooted or something on him, so could take a brief moment. But at least in the meantime, of course, both teams just kind of bantering back and forth. It's good to see, even though we are in the spirit of competition here, all of the players are still extremely friendly, extremely relatable to each other, apparently. <laughs> and I do see Crypt logging on to Overwatch, so he is on his way back. Should not be much longer. Thank you to everybody for sticking around for this massive game three between St. Clair and Kettering. Winner guaranteeing themselves a playoff invite here at the NACE Overwatch Spring Cup. This could be interesting. Yeah, Crypt had rejoined, then instantly got booted again. Let's see if he can stay connected. He's back this time by. Of course, worst case scenario, Crypt can't make it back in. You still have Sock Puppet available on the side of St. Clair College. That would definitely throw things in for a loop, however, because she is a support main more than anything. And, of course, Crypt being a DPS means the lineup would need to shuffle a little bit. Crypt does seem to be back in game, though. He is typing to everybody, so we won't need any substitutions. And countdown's going down, so okay, we're going to hop back into this one. St. Clair right outside that second checkpoint. A Kettering just finished with a team fight victory. Because Crypt and Blacklight were disconnected, they are both going to be starting from zero alt charge. Seymour leading the charge, eats that dynamite and just try and boost himself up, but of course taking a lot of heat in the process, that shield can only do so much. Jub Jub looking to strike is going to find Hydro Seeds, popping them pretty quickly. But Imp gets popped as well from Jaggles. Another huge one. This one, Prince Wada getting involved. Crypt finding Drock. And this could be the opening Sinclair needs to move forward. Jub Jub moving back to his old friends, but a huge sleep dart coming out once again from Blacklight. Going to keep himself alive. Jub Jub pretty low, but not being focused. Seymour is going to be allowed to get himself a double. And Blacklight just has to run for it. He was not in position to actually save any of those teammates because Jub Jub had shoved them so far back. So forcing the change in positioning, sometimes just as good as an elimination. Jub Jub positioned on himself in a way that he could completely flank them. Nano boosted, gonna charge in, and he's got the shield on top too. Gonna pop Jaggles instantly. Looking for another one, Blacklight going down, Meteor Strike coming up. Dows it in, and Drock is going to get taken down. I'm going to force them back into their spawn. St. Clair pushing this forward, looking to try and get themselves that third point in this match. Can anybody contest? They're going to get their last second. Prince Wada has the ult available, and unfortunately for Kettering, they were not able to get to the cart. One way or another, they could not make it. St. Clair getting the full three points on King's Row. Uh, we've been here before. In fact, just in the last game, St. Clair getting three points on the attack, but then they completely botched the defense. With King's Row being a map that is much more rehearsed, much more practiced for St. Clair squads, we shall get to see if it's going to be a repeat for Kettering and bring this final game 
two overtime rounds. Ready for battle. Now we get to see what Kettering is thinking about in regards to their attack. They have some different heroes picked out compared to what they were using before. We've not seen Drac on Sombra or Lightning on Winston yet. Could definitely make for a very aggressive attack. And on the side of St. Clair College for the defense, everybody's sticking to the same thing, but notably the only exception, Jub Jub is on a Torbjorn. So trying to hang on to this first point as long as possible will be the name of the game. As the attack is now underway, Kettering University looking to tie this up and bring it to overtime. A good May wall from Crypt is going to force Kettering to just blow through the wall or else their members are going to go down. They were able to get everybody out. They retreated in time. A good save on the side of Kettering. FMR going to just hang on a second, get topped off. And they're going to go for the aggression once again. It shields up, ready to go. Charges in. The May wall comes back up. Seymour keeping his tank as safe as possible. Of course, J uh, charging up that beam as well. And sitting at 100% charge, so this is going to hurt as soon as his engage actually happens. The Reinhardt FMR kind of getting messed up a little bit. Blacklight forced to bring out the Coalescence. And it's going to use it offensively. Actually, it's tearing apart St. Clair for the time being. But FMR is going to get taken down by Justin's Biotic Maid. Drock on the Torbjorn now is going to be... So far, so good. Super effective against Crypt for this case. Jub Jub pops out the Molten Core, but goes down right away. Now all Kettering has to do is actually sit on the point, which at least that Molten Core is going to make it so that you're going to be taking a little bit of damage while capturing. And now that it's worn out, 2 minutes and 30 seconds has now turned into 5 minutes here for Kettering. A very strong attack on this first point. No other switches. We have Lightning, Zarya with the Graviton ready to go. Four ultimates ready on side of St. Clair. They could keep them here if they really want to. Nano boosted Reinhardt, but the Grav is going to make things difficult. They are completely sandwiched here in this archway. Neither team is going to really be able to take advantage of it, though. Molten Core coming out here from the side of Kettering and make things messy. Going to be countered out by the Blizzard from Crypt. Prince Wada going to find the first kill. It's going to be onto Jaggles. The May is gone. This cart is absolutely still for the time being, though, as Lightmeal does manage to find Imp. Big healing, OE you know, healing coming out here from St. Clair is now gone. Jump Jump going to answer with an elimination of his own. The Shatter is available for FMR, as well as the Blizzard. St. Clair did use a lot of resources to try and keep them in this corridor. So far, so good, as we are now down to a minute 45. Blizzard is going to lead the charge, and St. Clair completely evacuates. I don't think anybody got stuck. The Molten Core coming out here from Jub Jub, I believe, though, is absolutely perfect. Going to make things extremely difficult. Back and forth eliminations on the side of both teams. We got a May Ditto, and this time it's going to be Jaggles getting the, the freeze for the time being, but gets countered out. Refrags, basically, by Seymour. Now, St. Clair kind of backing up a little bit far here. Going to try and see if they can play the corner here versus Kettering. Two alts available on both sides momentarily. Here comes the Graviton. The Coalescences are going to come out from both sides. Or not both sides. That's just from Blacklight. There's a Shatter. It's going to find one. The Counter Shatter is not going to be effective. Watt, unfortunately, just firing that one into nothing, but he's going to be able to at least take out FMR. Lightning with the refrag onto him, and then Drock gets one as well. The Blizzard coming out here from Crypt. Goes down pretty quickly, however. St. Clair not able to really capitalize, and this cart is going to get pushed forward. Beauty. 
Jub Jub in classic Jub Jub fashion, looking for the flank. But the call out there from Hydro Seeds is going to be pretty clutch. He's going to force the sound barrier. Actually, at the same time, in clutch timing, Imp is going to sound barrier and keep Jub Jub alive. He was sitting at like 8 HP at one point. Nicely done. Drock is going to be able to take down Imp, though. Now there's a lot more eliminations coming out on the side of Kettering as Lightning and the rest of the squad tear through the St. Clair defense. Get that second checkpoint. Now we're down to one more point to go with three minutes left on the clock. The only ult available on the side of Kettering would be that Coalescence, but there are way more resources available here for St. Clair if everything goes right. It's going to be the Graviton. Can we see Jub Jub line up the slam dunk? He does manage to take down Hydro Seeds with it. He's now looking for the Torbjorn, but he's going to be focused down. Black Light with the elimination. Lightning going to answer with one as well, taking down Crypt, but Jagles has also gone down in the meantime. It looks like Kettering are going to be forced to retreat for the time being. Prince Waters walked right into the entirety of Kettering, and we see the Graviton coming up. Jub Jub in flanking position once again as the Blizzard comes out. Can anybody take effect and take advantage of the freeze? Jagos is going down, but so does Imp. Imp has been dying so early in some of these fights alongside Jub Jub. It's really making this a little bit hard to hold here for St. Clair. And I think Prince Wada just completely shattered a shield, but at the same time, so did FMR. So I guess, uh, gotta keep things even for the time being. Blacklight with a huge kill onto Prince Wada, though. And FMR now leading the charge with the rest of the squad. Everybody's down from St. Clair. They can get this to that final checkpoint if they really just push this thing a little bit further is anybody going to be able to contest not at all everybody was respawning we're going to overtime rounds score three to three man the the tail of the tape is pretty well the same even though the time left on each team is pretty different st Clair. Didn't necessarily struggle too badly with that first point last time. However, they are definitely slower compared to what Kettering did. Kettering is going to be the first one on the attack with 1 minute 32 seconds on the clock. Do they want to try a different plan or go with what they know is working? Attackers incoming in 30 seconds. <laughs> you see Jub Jub hovering over an Echo, but I don't think Echo is legal yet in this Overwatch Spring Cup, but I could be wrong. Not very well must be. I'm sure we'll see a call out if we are wrong, but Echo seeing some competitive play here for the first time in this match. Of course, Echo, the newest hero in Overwatch. Able to fly around a little bit like Farah, but can also use her ulti to basically duplicate another hero on the enemy side. So far, so good with Prince Wada getting himself two kills. It's going to hold off the attack. Probably two more chances here for Kettering to get this first point. All right, Kettering coming on the, to the point once again. Jub Jub, as always, looking for the flank. He's going to take his time, but he's maybe taking too long as the rest of the St. Clair squad are falling. And Jub Jub definitely looking to be an absolute nuisance, but it took too long. And there's the stagger that we were looking for. <laughs> Just the absolute smack there coming up from FMR. But it's going to be the first point going over to Kettering University, but contrary to what we were seeing before, there is no time gains for getting the, the point captured. 
So 10 seconds until overtime, Kettering University are going to have to stick to that cart like glue and push this thing as far as possible, which could be annoying if you leave one person back there. Hydro Seeds, currently the only one back there. Blacklight looking to try and keep his team alive as the rest of the squad are moving in rather aggressively. Graviton coming out from Lightning. It's going to squish everybody together. Jub Jub is going to become a May at this point, and it actually walled off some of the members of Kettering for the time being. Is there anybody able to hang on to this cart? There's two more there. The duplication is about to go down, and actually Jub Jub was able to get a blizzard. Is that two blizzards coming out here from St. Clair to hold? All right. That's the first I've definitely seen that. Okay, St. Clair, going to be able to hold just outside the archway after that first point. Switching sides. Want to give a big thank you to everybody tuning in. I see we see some uh, some support from some other colleges as well. Big thank you and shout outs to the sales. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah, so St. Clair, uh, no pressure, bro. Like, yeah, this is it. Everything is relying on this attack. They'll have to score the one point, wait for the card to come back out, and then push it outside that archway. Just a little bit past it. And the playoff hopes and dreams will be alive. If they cannot do that, Kettering University... We'll be looking to move forward. Because once again, like BS, BSC is currently in position to take one of the seed, take one of the spots, but there's only one spot left. And of course, it's tied currently between these two teams right here. It's all on the line. And that's not a good start if you're on the side of St. Clair. Drock coming in clutch as the turret finds himself a kill. FMR and Jub Jub again looking for flanks, but unfortunately, like, not able to really get anything started. Taking too long. Now there's two minutes on the clock. Kind of scary, in my opinion, to have such a huge moment rely on or have one of your team teammates relying on a hero that's pretty well brand new to the game in such a clutch match like this and prince wada going to get separated from the squad but actually fmr going down as well jub jub does find the shot he needed to and st Clair push in and make some sort of advantage off of this because of course king's row that spawn point is so far away for this first point Blacklight going to keep everybody alive, and it's going to successfully take out Seymour. Blacklight getting peppered, but is able to get back into that health pack. Top himself off ever so slightly and wait for Hydra Seeds to slowly but surely bring himself back up. St. Clair in the offensive position, looking to try and take care of this point. Minute left on the clock. We have the Graviton coming out. Drock also has the Molten Core. This should be able to shred anybody who got stuck in that Graviton, anybody on the point. We're gonna have Jub Jub now becoming a Reinhardt. Can he find himself a Shatter and possibly turn this game around? The Blizzard coming out is gonna make things difficult as well. Does find the Shatter, finds the last two members from Kettering University. But they're going to fight right back. Coalescence coming out. The first tick of this first point is finally being taken down. St. Clair might be able to get this, but by the time the cart is out, it is going to be overtime. 20 seconds. St. Clair definitely needs to be careful. If somebody gets picked out, this could be the season. This isn't actually looking too bad for St. Clair right now. They have two alts available. 
The Grav and the Blizzard can both be huge, and that's a big pick from Jub Jub. As long as they stay on that cart, the Graviton comes out, the Blizzard comes out, it gets eaten by Lightning. That was absolutely clutch, but St. Clair are tearing through. They should be able to push themselves into a playoff spot if they can just clean up this team fight. But Blacklight and Drock are going to stop this in its tracks. The Molten Core coming out, not going to be enough. Hydro Seeds is still here with Blacklight to try and juke around as much as possible. Trying to hit the bouncing Lucio is always difficult. The Coalescence coming out, but is anybody on the point to contest? I don't think so at this point. It's moving forward. Hydro Seeds needs to get there. He's going to put himself on the cart. Is anybody else going to be able to help contest? The reinforcements are coming, but Hydro Seeds is down. But here comes FMR. The big tank line going to try and stick around, but Jub Jub going to finish him off. Now the Emergency Diva back in play. Lightning is right in time, but Jub Jub is now going to steal the Diva. Has the mobility and has the tankiness to just stick himself on the point. This Diva Bomb could actually be clutch. Is it going to be enough? 50, point 50 meters away. Graviton, everybody's going to be stuck on the point. Another oh, the ultimate does get completed. And is that it? St. Clair take care of it. In a very clutch overtime situation. In game number three, holy smokes. Of course, this is the ending defense from Kettering, and of course, Jub Jub able to go on an absolute tear. But holy smokes. What a fantastic way to conclude the stage one of the Nace Overwatch Spring Cup here for St. Clair, as they're going to be able to take this one in 2-1 fashion.